I hold Profilus back on YouTube to tell you about uh, the specific detailed procedure to clean the Frolin T4E wood chip boiler. There is a video on the channel that talks about this boiler. I presented you the wood chip storage room, the stoker, the combustion chamber, and also uh, other specific details. In this video, I just want to present you a specific and detailed procedure to clean the whole system from ashes. First of all, the question is, what are ashes? Well, ashes are those components in the wood that cannot burn. There is a classification, they are distinguished between bottom ashes and flying ashes. Bottom ashes is the most consistent part of ashes and they are the heavier one, uh, the one that you can find in the, in the first stage of the boil, the combustion chamber. And then you also have flying ashes that are those lighter that actually are following flow of the fumes in the in the boiler okay so you can find them in the heat exchanger part and also onto the flue lines okay but anyway let's go with the cleaning procedure that is what we want to see now first of all you have to stop the machine let's say about 12 hours before the maintenance because you want all the surfaces and the boiler itself to cool down because you're going to put your hands inside so you don't want to hurt yourself because of the heat okay now let's start with the heart of the system that is the combustion chamber inside uh, after opening the panel it's clear the huge quantity of accumulated bottom ashes into the combustion chamber here first of all we proceed uh, by removing by hand the main quantity of ashes you can see that they are bottom ashes because they are not producing a lot of dust they are quite heavy okay then we clean the lateral side from all encrusted residuals or those that are actually attached to the steel. Uh, there is a specific tool to do that. It is given by Frolin. As you see, it is something like that. And then in the end of the cleaning, you can see underneath the ashes a plate made of the refractory material. Uh, there is a big hole in the middle and it led the fire passing from the combustion chamber up to the second volume in, in the room, okay? There's a specific role because it keeps the environment, the combustion environment really protected. So uh, you're gonna have, as you have seen, residuals on this plate, but more importantly, it is keeping a lot of heat inside uh, so that you have the combustion stage that is really hot. It is improving a lot the efficiency in the combustion. Very interesting is the fact you have to notice the residuals on this refractory material plate. Uh, you can also appreciate different colors, probably due to some oxides or other combustion residuals that are forming at high, really high temperatures, okay? At that point, we can access the heart of the boiler, that is the combustion chamber. Uh, first, we're gonna clear the four sides to open all these lateral holes that are required to let the oxygen, let the air pass inside the to the combustion chamber. They are obviously needed for the combustion. Please notice the whole plate at the bottom. They're not whole, they are tiny slots. At the start of the procedure, boiler is going to clean all of it, its systems, okay? And in this case, this plate tips off 110 degrees to remove the accumulated material on it. You, you see that the plate rotates and cleans and all the residuals on it are falling down onto the collecting screw uh, that is actually bringing the material out into the collecting ashes box, okay? Finally, I'm gonna remove by hand some small nails that are blocked into these slots. I just want to have them as often as possible because the air is passing and you also have that the ashes are falling out. So you don't want to have obstacles inside. At that point, the combustion chamber is perfectly clean. I want to show you how detailed about the feeding system. You see that there is a screw on the left. It is the one that comes from the stove and brings the material inside the combustion chamber. You see that once the feeding screw is activated, it is pushing the material into the chamber and this is actually how it brings material inside actually very interesting now at that point we can remount the horizontal plate and finally we proceed with the cleaning the next step is about the posterior part of the boiler the section uh, where we do have the heat exchanger first of all we're going to remove the upper cover to access the tubular section actually you see a big layer of insulation material that actually is protecting the boiler surface against the high temperatures that are going to reach in that point because you have all the fumes coming up, so it's really high. This is actually a very important point because this is the heat exchange part of the boiler, the region where hot fumes are giving the heat 
to the cold water inside. Here we want to be as clean as possible, so it is really important to clean it sometimes because you want to maximize the heat exchange efficiency. Now, as you see, once open, there is a lot of flying ashes deposited here, both on the lid that I previously removed, obviously, and also on, onto the upper part of the heat exchanger, the two relators in the boiler. Really important is the fact you can see them now. This is the heart of the heat exchange system, okay? Well, turbulators are actually those screws that you can see on the side of the tube and they have several functions. First of all, they're gonna slow down the air flows and in this way you give more time for the airflow to exchange heat. And since the speed is slowing down, you also have uh, the dashes are falling down more easily and so you're cleaning a lot of the fumes. And finally, they are also important in the cleaning procedure because once they are shocked, they are going up and then down, and they are cleaning the surface of the tube. This is good because you're removing solid residuals. At that point, we're gonna clean by hand the turbulator slit. As you see, uh, there are a lot of uh, fine ashes, so they are falling down very easily. And then we also clean the upper part of the heat exchanger section because we want at that point to be as clean as possible in order to remove all the turbulators. To remove turbulators, first of all, you have to lock them from their main frame. To do that, you have to go at the bottom of the stove, you have to remove two covers. This is required to access the moving frame onto which turbulator is fixed. I'm gonna give you more detail about that frame next in the video when I'm going to actually move it, okay? Once you have opened both covers, you clearly see the second collecting screw for flying ashes at the bottom down there. At this point, I'm gonna show you how turbulators are connected to the main frame. As you see, turbulators are not composed all, only of this screw. Uh, there is also, uh, what is interesting, an internal long plate, an internal, let's say, strip. Uh, this plate at the bottom has two holes. One hole is required to fix the turbulator itself, and the other hole is the one in which you have to insert a pin uh, to connect turbulators to the frame. Okay. In order to unlock everything, you have to unscrew this uh, 13 nut. Given that by pulling, you can remove the long guard that pins the turbulators on the frame. They are completely detached now, so you can proceed removing it then. At that point, we have collected all of them, okay? We have 20, there are 15 plus 5 turbulators. Uh, notice the very fine and black uh, color dashes deposited on those turbulators, the one for slow air. On the contrary, you can see a lot of more encrusted and solid residuals, and they are also white colored one onto the, the five. Those, in fact, that are in contact with high temperatures. And this is the reason of the different colored residuals on them. At that point, obviously, we can proceed cleaning them manually. Then we have to clean the internal tubes into the heat exchanger section, okay? Uh, it is really important uh, to remove all those residuals that are encrusted on the sides. Notice also a detail about the cleaning tool. Our roof is not really high, and so we have this tool is specifically designed to be flexible so that you can flex it and insert into the tubes, even if your roof is not that much high, okay? Finally, once you have cleaned everything inside, as you see the surface of tubes are really, really clean, you can proceed by reinserting everything. 15 turbulators in the slow air section and five turbulators in the fast air section. Please remember that in remounting back all the turbulators, you have to align the internal plate with a specific slot that is into the frame, into the mounting frame, okay? You have eventually to turn a bit the turbulator in order to let it fall down in the slot correctly. Once you have done that for the turbulators, you can proceed by re-locking them. You put the pin inside and then you lock it again. Now, at that point, everything is uh, still open, so I just want to show you the cleaning procedure that is done 
at the startup of the boiler. This procedure is really simple. As I told you, turbulators are fixed on the frame. This moving frame slowly moves up and then uh, it falls down very rapidly. By doing that, turbulators are shot and uh, all the ashes collected on them are falling down into the section below. <laughs> There is actually an interesting question. As you see at the bottom, there is a collecting screw for flying ashes, okay? But actually, you have also turbulators far from this screw. So the question is, how are all the ashes collected into the, the screw in the lateral part of the boiler? Well, there is a mechanism, I'm gonna show you a detail in, in, the, in the video, that actually slowly moves towards the collecting screw in order to bring the ashes towards it, and then finally it rapidly goes back. And this procedure, done multiple times and in synchronization with the moving frame, uh, let all the falling ashes going toward the collecting screw for flying ashes. Up. Finally, we have to clean the flue lines up there and also the main fume blower. Okay, let's proceed then by removing the first flue line turn. Then we go with the horizontal line. You see a lot of uh, residuals on it because flying ashes are falling down really easily in horizontal trade. The ideal flue line is a perfect, perfectly vertical one, okay? Uh, because of the design of the plant, we had no space. We cannot do that. So we had to insert, as I told you in the previous video, two turns, 90 degree turns that we don't really like, but anyway, we had to do that, and also the horizontal line, okay? Then at that point, we can proceed by dismounting the blower, okay? That is located in the backward part of the boiler. There are external protection that we have to remove first, then you dismount the wall motor. You can see all the dirty blades that are full of fine ashes on them. We clean them manually and with the compressed air in order to remove as much residual as possible, okay? Finally, using the vacuum cleaner, we can clean the first connection of the fuel line up there, pay a lot of attention because here you have the lambda sensor, uh, the one that is measuring the quantity of residual oxygen at that point. It is This sensor is really important because with this information the boiler is regulating the speed of the blower in order to intake more or less air depending on the combustion efficiency, okay? Now, at that point we have cleaned everything so we can remount everything and then you can restart the boiler and hope that everything is working. Uh, we just rapidly looked at boiler temperatures. You can see that after the cleaning procedure, the hot fumes coming out at that point in the flue lines where there is also the uh, temperature sensor, their temperatures are lower than, let's say, 20, 30 degrees with respect to the situation not cleaned. So this means obviously that the efficiency in heat exchanging has improved a lot. So you have to do this wall cleaning procedure, let's say once per year, at least, uh, maybe it's gonna be better if you do it twice, okay? Okay, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel and also let's wait for other videos, okay? Bye.